<laughs> All right, let's move on to a, let's move on to a perennial question. We get this we get this question often, and we're going to keep coming back to it until the legislature decides it one way or another. What is the status of, and what is your view about the possibility of legalizing cannabis? Senator Abler, we'll start with you, and then go to Senator Hoffman. Uh, well, I'm actually very concerned, um, and uh, I do believe that the popular opinion is that we should do it. I'm not sure if the popular thinkers have thought of the downsides in a serious way. It is not a casual thing. The the marijuana that we have today is not your, uh, well, it's not what they had in college uh, when I was in college, and that's not what has been around in the past. It's very potent, in some cases, more than 90%. And even though people uh, joke about reefer madness and all that, psychosis due to this very strong cannabis is very real. And I've had a number of people in my office talking about their son who's no longer with them and the psychosis he experienced and doctors who are worried about the synaptic development up to age 25 of these young adults that never completes itself. And so the governor has been kind of glib and, you know, Mr. Winkler, like, oh, this is great, you know, and the people, oh, let's go get loaded and it's all going to be fine. But there's huge issues uh, on the safety on the highways. Um, we heard the, the governor's bill today on legalizing it, and they had talk about prevention, but not one dollar out of 100 FTEs, and I forget the budget, 100 million or so, um, for treatment. And it's a known fact that when you legalize this and make it more available, it's going to be more available and in the hands of middle schoolers. And Senator Hoffman's committee and mine is one that oversees treatment. And I was I was shocked, just absolutely shocked that they were saying, well, we're, we're gonna work on prevention and explain to these youngsters why it's just not a good idea. Well, how did that work with smoking? How's that working with alcohol? And even though uh, marijuana is thought to be a tame drug, it's no longer tame with the strength of that. So I'm, I'm very concerned about it. And if we do legalize it, we have to for sure uh, manage the potency, maybe at 15% or less, um, and then try to keep it out of the hands of, <laughs> Even low twenties is bad, but you know I, I don't know how you keep it out of the hands of the younger kids. So thank you. You, 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 forgot, you forgot the second P they said today, Jim. They said prevention and partnerships, and I came back and I asked about prevention, treatment, and recovery. You got to have the three things that happen with oh, yeah. that. And so there's a lot of gaps in this one, Barry. I'm, I'm looking at okay, you, you put this money, but you're not hearing people talk about prevention, treatment and recovery, right? And and it's like, um, that's, that scares me as a policy person because we know this, addiction is addiction is addiction, period, right? You're gonna, it doesn't matter. We know that the most folks that go in through treatment right now, the addiction is alcohol. Alcohol, legal alcohol in the state of Minnesota is the number one thing for treatment providers. Number two is methamphetamines and number three is opioids, right? And so, but it's, you know, addiction is a disease and it's like, well, where, where in this bill is it talking about that, what Jim just brought up, prevention, treatment and recovery. We have what Jim, 427, 428 treatment providers in the state of Minnesota. Um, they're at a capacity, 50 some thousand people a year. Um, go through treatment in the state of Minnesota. And that's just on those top three, Judge, that I did. Now you're going to add another one that has a potential to be uh, an addiction. And, and it's like, what are we doing to enhance the system that's already there to help support somebody if they if they do that? Second thing is, why aren't we taking this? And again, it's it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when, but, but to get to the when, where is the conversation about how do you know somebody is under the influence when they're driving. What's sure. what's the, and, and I'll, Senator Abler should talk about his own son who is a sergeant uh, of, uh, of police in a major city in a state called Colorado, right? And and I remember his stories, Jim, and I, I think you should share with that about, you know, what their process was looking at, what is a DUI or DWI, right? And then, and then on top of that, you sit there and you say, well, wait a minute. Um, why aren't we looking at decriminalizing it first, right, and then go through the, the process on it? So, um, I, I just I got more questions than I have answers to, Judge Jim. Uh, I can talk more, but if you want to take another question, uh, 
judge we can do that so I, all right um 